Hello, amazing mathematicians. We're going to go through our concept for today, which I got to tell you, it's from the get-go. It is so easy, so please don't freak out about anything because, you know, honestly, this ed puzzle is probably going to be super short because of how easy it is. We're going to start with 8.5e, solving problems involving direct variation. Our learning goal is basically when you see the words varies directly or directly varies, it is going to trigger you to set up a proportion. You guys know proportions from last year. I know you know this mostly because I know that I taught you this. We will set up either a one box or a WKU box, which we'll get into that literally on the next page. So let's go through some vocabulary terms. There's not a whole lot for today. Direct variation basically just means it is a proportional relationship which again, all of these words should sound super familiar because you already know it. Direct variation form is y equals kx. This formula should be super familiar. It is literally the same thing, a proportional relationship. It's a proportional equation used for direct variation and constant of proportionality. The, the only new word that we're doing today is direct variation. That is a term that we did not use in seventh grade but we are using it in eighth grade, but it means the same thing. It is a proportional relationship, meaning it goes through the origin. <clears throat> okay, we are also going to go through what the word, oh, proportion means, number six. An equation that states two ratios are equivalent. If you forgot, equivalent just means equals. It means they are the same. All right. Let's get into the notes for today. Direct variation. The essential question that we are going to solve is what is direct variation and how do you use it to find a missing measurement? Which I gotta tell you again, is going to be super duper easy. Basically what it means is that y varies directly with x. It looks like the equation y equals kx. A direct variation is a relationship in which two quantities increase or decrease at the same rate. So I'm going to say it again. A direct variation is a relationship in which two, x and y, quantities increase, meaning going up, or decrease, meaning going down at the same rate, meaning they are being multiplied. It is a multiplicative, multiplicative relationship, i.e. unit rate. K equals unit rate. What's super important is that direct variation relationships are proportional. I don't know why my pencil keeps switching to the eraser. And it goes through the origin, which I believe I've already said that once today, but I'm going to say it again, meaning it goes through the ordered pair 0, 0, where x is 0, and if x is 0, then y is 0. So some examples. This is where we're going to set up our proportion. The value of y varies directly with x. Here's my keywords, varies directly. That means I'm going to set up a proportion. When y equals 8.75, x equals 7. So what is the value of x when y is 15? I'm even going to pull, sorry, we're going to set up a 1 box. Um, the WKU, I'm going to write this at the top. So 1, we have words, original, and new. That's the W-O-N. WKU, whoop, that's a W, not a U is words known unknown. 
words, known, unknown. I don't really care which one you use. And honestly, I don't even care if you write W-K-U or W-O-N. What I do care and what I will always care about is that you set up your words. What goes on top, what goes on bottom. And I'm going to say that Y should always be on top. X should always be on bottom. Dependent divided by independence. Rise over run. Y divided by X. Change in Y over change in X. I cannot make this any more clear. So if Y is over X and Y equals 8.75, then 8.75 goes on top and seven goes on bottom. Then my unknown or my new is what is X? I don't know what X is, so I'm gonna leave that as a variable. I do know that Y is 15. This should look super familiar. From here, I am going to cross multiply and divide. When I cross multiply seven times 15, Yes, you can use your calculators for this because quite frankly, I'm going to use my calculator for this. I'm just not gonna show it on the actual iPad because I don't wanna have to keep switching back and forth. Seven times 15 equals 105. And then I am dividing that by 8.75. And 105 divided by 8.75 comes out to 12. Therefore, my answer is I'm gonna put it at the front because I ran out of space. When y is 15, x is 12. Boom, shakalaka. All right, number two. We're gonna do the same thing though, guys. It's just in a different format, so it just looks a little weird, but I guarantee it, it's the same. If y varies directly, meaning I'm gonna set up a proportion, with X, find the missing coordinate. Ooh, this looks a little different. I have coordinates now. So I'm gonna label X, Y, X, Y. And then when I set up my proportion, I have Y divided by X. And this is my original, is four and 10. So 10 is Y, X is four. Please do not get that confused. Make sure you're labeling your numbers. If you do not label, you might flip them. That is a common thing kids do and quite honestly it is a stupid mistake we don't like to make stupid mistakes because we have to do it again so let's just try to get it right the first time slowing down being careful as to what we're doing y is on top y is 10 x is on bottom x is 4. now my second coordinates i know the x value which means that goes on bottom i do not know the y value so that is going to stay a variable from here easy pull peasy Cross multiply and divide. 10 times six equals 60. And then I'm gonna do 60 divided by four. I can use a calculator for this, but quite frankly, it is mental math. Four can go into six one time, remainder two. Four can go into 20, five, 15, five times. So my answer is 15. Therefore, my ordered pair though is gonna be six comma 15. So when X is six, Y is 15. Boom, done. Moving on to number three. Guys, this, you should already understand this, like work ahead. You should know what we're doing by now. The value of Y varies directly with X, which means what? Proportion, yes, you're so right, yay. Again, biggest thing, always set up your words first. I don't necessarily have words, I'm doing letters, but still it is labeling what goes on top, what goes on bottom just to make sure I don't get confused. When Y is two, X is one third. Well, we got a fraction and a fraction. It's gonna be fine, guys. So Y is two, I'm gonna put that on top. X is one third, one over three. What is the value of Y? So I'm looking for Y, that's my unknown. When X is six, making sure to put six on the bottom because that's where my X's go. Here, cross multiply and divide. Two times six is 12, that is mental math. And now 12 divided by one third. Well, I know because I'm a math teacher and I've been doing this for forever. You should also know because you learned it, I'm pretty sure in the fifth grade, if not, you did learn it in the sixth grade. 
because I know fractions is a part of the sixth grade curriculum. And we did review it last year in seventh grade. When you divide by a fraction, you keep change flip, KCF, or the SIR method, same invert reciprocal. I'm pretty sure, sir, the sir method, stay, stay inverse reciprocal, to where it is 12 times 3, which equals 36. Because the inverse, right, divided by 1 third, stay inverse reciprocal. The 12 stays the same. The I invert, change it to multiplication. Reciprocal of 1 third is 3 over 1, which is 3. And 12 times 3 is 36. So my answer is... 36. When x is 6, y is 36. As an ordered pair, this would look like 6, 36. And boom, done. Okay, moving on. Number four. <clears throat> Again, you should have already gotten the hang of this. We should be working ahead. And quite frankly, I'm probably just going to stop the ad puzzle and ask you for the answer to question four right now. If an equation, in an equation, y varies directly as x varies, and if the constant of variation is 1.5, what is the value of x? Oh, no, I can't ask you to do this one because this is new for you guys. So I'm actually going to see how we, okay, we have the constant of variation right here, it's 1.5, and at the top of our notes up here, we have an equation, this formula, y equals kx. I'm going to use that formula in this problem. So y equals kx. The constant of variation, that is k. So k equals 1.5. What is the value of x when y is 13.5? So what do I know? I know that k is 1.5. I know that y is 13.5, and I don't know what x is. So that's going to stay your variable. Now I'm going to substitute these two numbers into my equation. So instead of writing y, I'm writing 13.5. Instead of writing k, I'm writing 1.5. And I don't know what x is, so that stays the same. From here, you should know what to do because this is a one-step equation. If I am multiplying x by 1.5, then to solve for x, I'm going to divide by 1.5 on both sides. And yes, guess what? You get to use your calculator. But really, this is 135 divided by 15, so it should be simple. But 13.5 divided by 1.5 comes out to 9. So x is 9 when y is 13.5. Cool. We've got three more problems to get through, and truth be told, this is easy, like I said. Right? Don't we agree? I feel like we should agree. All right, number five. If x and y vary directly, oh, there's those words again, very directly, and y is 31.5, x is 18, which equation correctly represents the relationship between x and y? Cool, oh, man, I've got a lot of funky things going on here. So I'm going to put it at the top here. This is the same equation that we had. So y equals kx. That means that k equals y divided by x, right? This formula should also look familiar because I know it's on my anchor chart. I'm pretty sure it's on everyone's anchor chart because it's a very familiar formula. That's how we get the constant of proportionality. We learned it in unit three and we learned it last year. This I know. So Rewriting it down here just to help our brain process and memorize. K equals Y divided by X. I have Y. I have X. So now I'm going to substitute in 31.5 for Y and 18 for X. And then I'm going to divide. Which comes out to 1.75. Considering I don't see 1.75 as any of these answers. I'm going to change 1.75 to a fraction. Um, I know that I can just type in 1.75, hit math, 
enter, enter, and it'll get me my answer. But I don't have my calculator out in front of me, so I'm just gonna do it in my head, and it comes out to seven fourths. How I did this in my head, just so you guys know, is here, let me erase this real quick and show you. 1.75 is one and three fourths. So I did one times four is four, and then add it to the numerator. So four plus three is seven, so seven fourths. And again, my equation is y equals kx. That looks like all what my answers, that's the form my answers are in. So I'm looking for the one where instead of it is y equals kx, it is y equals 7.4x. So that automatically knocks off A. B looks like it might be the right answer because it's got that 7.4 in there, but they have flipped the X and the Y because it is not X equals 7 over 4Y. It is Y equals 7 over 4X. So I know B is wrong. C has the right constant of proportionality and the variables are in the right place. So I'm willing to bet that this is my answer. And then lastly, D, X equals, well, nope. We know that's in the wrong format. That is not what I'm looking at. So C is the proper answer. Cool. Dos mas. Number six. A cyclist travels 42 miles on a three-hour bike ride. At this rate, in how many hours would the cyclist travel in 70 miles? Well, it looks like I've got some words. So the two things I'm dealing with are miles and hours. Time always goes on bottom. So this is my y, this is my x. My y is 42 miles in three hours, and I'm trying to figure out how many hours, so that is my variable, I don't know, but I do know the 70 miles. Cool. You know, what I like to do first is I do like to reduce before I cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to, no, mm, I am going to, but you guys know that you can always just cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to reduce them both by three just to make my life easier since I'm not really using my calculator. Uh, three divided by three is one. 42 divided by three is 14. So when here, when I cross multiply and divide, I know one times 70 is 70 and I'm doing 70 divided by 14, which does come out to, try to calculate it in my head real quick, um, five. So five hours is my answer. Cool, and of course you guys are doing it on your calculator, so you are checking my work, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Last one, number seven. If Y varies directly, those are the magical words, with x at a constant rate of negative 14, constant rate, so I know that that's k, right? So k equals negative 14. Which of the following shows the possible values for x and y? So again, my formula is y equals kx, so I'm going to substitute in negative 14 for k to figure out if this is true. Well, I'm going to substitute actually everything in. So if y equals kx, then this is negative 14 equals negative 14 times 0. Does that make sense? No, because negative 14 times 0 is 0, not negative 14. So that doesn't make any sense. So next one, 28 should equal negative 14 times 2. Well, I know negative 14 times 2 is negative 28. And that is not equivalent to positive 28. So B cannot be my answer. Next up, C. Negative 98 should equal negative 14 times 7. Well, I know negative 14 times 7 is negative 98. And that does equal negative 98. So it looks like C is my answer. But still, I am going to check D just in case. Negative 5 should equal... Negative 14 times 70. Well, I know negative 14 times 70 is going to be a heck of a lot smaller than negative 5. So D cannot be my answer, which means yes, C is the final answer. And please notice how I solved this because I substituted in to check to see if it's correct. And yeah, I feel like that's 
that's an easy way to do it. And to practice our substitution skills, which I love. All right, you beautiful humans. That's what we got. That is the whole shebang. Your notes should look like mine. Setting up one boxes or WKU proportions, uh, using our formulas to help us substitute and organize our work. And there we have it. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher. That's our job.